Hello friends, in this module we are going to study another very important vitamin required by our body namely vitamin D. Various aspects such as its history, structure, chemistry, dietary sources, distribution, metabolism and absorption. Also its functions, deficiency and toxicity. You must all be aware of the association of vitamin D to bone health or lack of it to osteoporosis. Let me throw more light on its functions, metabolism, deficiency and so on. After going through this module, you will be able to gain knowledge on the history of vitamin D, to understand the structure and chemistry of vitamin D, identify the dietary sources and explain the distribution and absorption of the vitamin. From ancient times, in folk medicine, sunlight was used in the treatment of rickets. Vitamin D is a unique vitamin and its availability in the body largely depends on its synthesis on the skin when exposed to sunlight and hence is referred to as the sunshine vitamin. Modest exposure to sunlight is usually sufficient for most people to produce their own vitamin D using ultraviolet light and cholesterol in the skin. Its dietary requirements are usually small. Apart from its important role in maintaining bone health, which is known as its calcitropic role, other health performing benefits are prevention of osteoporosis, diabetes, psoriasis, hypertension, arthritis, multiple sclerosis and cardiovascular disorders. Let us first start with an overview of the history of its discovery. The first scientific description of vitamin D deficiency rickets was provided in the 17th century by Dr. Daniel Whistler in 1645 and Professor Francis Glisson in 1650. It was in 1918 that Sir Edward Mellenby, working with dogs raised exclusively indoors in the absence of sunlight or UV light, established that the bone disease rickets was caused by a deficiency of a trace component present in the diet. Furthermore, he established that cod liver oil was an excellent anti-racketic agent. Shortly thereafter, E. V. McCollum and associates observed that by bubbling oxygen through a preparation of the fat soluble vitamin, they were able to distinguish between vitamin A which was inactivated and vitamin D which retained activity. In 1923, Goldblatt and Soames clearly identified that when a precursor of vitamin D in the skin was irradiated with sunlight or UV light, a substance equivalent to the fat soluble vitamin was produced. Hess and Weinstock set about to prove the popular belief that light equals vitamin D. They excised a small portion of skin, irradiated it with UV light and then fed it to a group of racketic rats. The skin that had been irradiated provided protection against rickets, whereas the unirradiated skin provided no protection. Clearly, these animals were able to produce by UV radiation adequate quantities of the fat soluble vitamin, suggesting that it was not an essential dietary constituent. The chemical structure of vitamin D was determined in the 1930s by Professor Adolf Otto Reinhold at the University of Göttingen, Germany. Vitamin D2, which could be produced by UV radiation of ergosterol, was chemically characterized in 1932. Vitamin D3 was chemically characterized in 1936 when it was shown to result from the UV radiation of 7 dehydrocholesterol. Simultaneously, the anti racketic component of cod liver oil was shown to be identical to the newly characterized vitamin D3. These results clearly established that the anti-racketic substance vitamin D was chemically a steroid, more specifically a secosteroid. We shall now move on to the structure and chemistry of vitamin D. 
Compounds with vitamin D activity are sterol derivatives. The two most important forms are ergocalciferol of plant origin derived from plant sterol and ergosterol and cholecalciferol of animal origin from 7-dehydrocholesterol present in mammalian skin. The conversion occurs on exposure to UV rays from sunlight. Vitamin D is soluble in fats and organic solvents ranging from hexane to methanol. It is stable when stored in organic solvents in the absence of oxygen and sunlight. What are the dietary sources of vitamin D? Most foods have negligible amounts of vitamin D. Dietary vitamin D is derived mostly from foods of animal origin. Certain marine fishes are known to be good sources, whereas fresh water fishes have moderate amounts of vitamin D3 in liver. Major dietary sources of vitamin D include cod liver oil, fish oil, fatty fish, egg yolk, liver and butter. A large portion of daily vitamin D intakes come from fortified foods. Milk being a common food and also contains calcium and phosphorus, it is the most practical food to fortify with vitamin D. The fortification of milk has greatly improved its vitamin D content. Therefore, fortified milk and dairy products made from fortified milk are among the good sources of vitamin D and are the major contributors in the human diet. Margarine has also been fortified. An average of 80% of dietary vitamin D is absorbed by both infants and adults. We shall have a look into the distribution, metabolism, absorption and utilization of vitamin D. Being fat soluble, Vitamin D is absorbed like other lipids. Bile salts are essential for its absorption. After combining with bile salts, it passes into the lacteal systems through the intestinal epithelial cells. Absorption occurs from the duodenum and jejunum by diffusion mechanism through the lymphatic system and ultimately packaged into chylomicrons and passes into the bloodstream. One of the characteristic features particular to vitamin D is that it can be synthesized in the body from sunlight. How is the mechanism of vitamin D synthesis in the skin? Let us see. Vitamin D3 derived either from photolysis in skin or from dietary sources is transported by a specific vitamin D binding protein to liver where it is stored or further metabolized to 25 dihydroxy vitamin D3. Liver is a major storage organ for this vitamin. The biologically active form of the hormone is 1,25-dihydroxy vitamin D3 also termed calcitrol which functions primarily to regulate calcium and phosphorus homeostasis. Calcitrol is derived from ergosterol produced in plants and 7-dehydrocholesterol produced in the skin. Ergocalciferol, also known as D2, is formed by UV radiation of ergosterol. In the skin, 7-dehydrocholesterol is converted to cholecalciferol or vitamin D3 following UV irradiation. The same enzymatic pathway in the body converts vitamin D2 calcitrol and D3 calcitrol. Cholecalciferol is absorbed from the intestine and transported to the liver bound to a specific vitamin D binding protein. In the liver, cholecalciferol is hydroxylated at the 25th position by a specific D325 hydroxylase generating 25 hydroxy D3, which is the major circulating form of vitamin D. Conversion of 25 hydroxy D3 to its biologically active form calcitrol occurs through the activity of a specific D31 hydroxylase enzyme present in the proximal convoluted tubules of the kidneys in bone and placenta. 
hydroxylation of 25 hydroxy D3 at 24 position can also take place by a specific D3 24 hydroxylase enzyme present in the kidneys, intestine, placenta and cartilage. Calcitrol functions along with parathyroid hormone and calcitonin to regulate serum calcium and phosphorus levels. Parathyroid hormone is released in response to low serum calcium and induces the production of calcitrol. In contrast, reduced levels of parathyroid hormone stimulate synthesis of the inactive 24-25 dihydroxy D3. In the intestinal epithelium, calcitrol functions as a steroid hormone in inducing the expression of calbindin, a protein involved in intestinal calcium absorption. The increased absorption of calcium ions requires simultaneous absorption of a negatively charged counter ion to maintain electrical neutrality. The predominant counter ion is pi. When plasma calcium level falls, calcitrol and parathyroid hormone stimulate bone resorption and calcium reabsorption by the distal renal tubules. The role of calcitonin in calcium homeostasis is to decrease elevated serum calcium levels by inhibiting bone resorption. Vitamin D from the skin is bound to a plasma binding protein so that its uptake by the liver is limited. Dietary vitamin D is absorbed by incorporation into mixed micelles and enters very low density lipoproteins or chylomicrons, microns which are taken up by the liver. Thus, hepatic uptake is not limited by the plasma binding protein and toxic levels of metabolites can be reached only after oral ingestion. Vitamin D synthesized in the skin from cholesterol also enters the capillary system and is transported by DBP. Vitamin D attached to DBP is delivered to the peripheral tissues. Little of vitamin D is stored in the liver. Ultraviolet light penetration depends on the amount of melanin in the skin, clothing type, blockage of effective rays by window glass and use of sunscreen. Sensible sun exposure of the arms and legs or the hands, arms and face for 15 to 20 minutes for 2 to 3 times per week is sufficient to meet the demand. What are the requirements of vitamin D? Vitamin D is considered more a pro-hormone than a vitamin. It can be synthesized in the body in adequate amounts by simple exposure to bright sunlight even for 5 minutes a day. Habitual Indian diets do not provide even 10% of the requirement. The vitamin D requirement varies with individual exposure to sunlight which is affected by season, the latitude where a person resides and even a person's skin color. In general, people who are regularly exposed to sunlight have no dietary requirement for vitamin D. The Dietary Recommended Intake Committee has not established an RDA for vitamin D. Instead, it proposed levels of 5 micrograms per day, that is 200 international units for both men and women from birth to 50 age, years of age. Dietary recommendations triple for individuals old, older than 70 years because of their skin's decreased ability to synthesize vitamin D. The allowance for vitamin D was revised in 2010. The recommended intake for all ages is 5 micrograms per day, the same as before. However, the RDA for those 1 to 70 years of age is 15 micrograms per day. Those older than 70 have an RDA of 20 micrograms per day. The latter were increased in older adults because of their reduced sun exposure reduce skin biosynthesis efficiency and lower renal hydroxylase activity. The upper tolerable level for vitamin D is 50 micrograms per day. In pregnancy, vitamin D supplementation increases the circulating concentration of 25 hydroxy D3 and may improve neonatal handling of calcium. 
because only a small amount of 25 hydroxy D3 is transferred from mother to fetus, the allowance was not increased for pregnancy. The recommended intake for pregnancy is half of the RDA of 10 microgram per day and several studies suggest it is too low especially for dark skinned women and those living in environments with little sun exposure. The upper limit for vitamin D is 50 microgram per day for both pregnant and non-pregnant women. With even limited sunlight exposure, neither the breastfed infant nor the formula fed infant requires vitamin D. In response to the increased requirement of vitamin D, insufficiency with age, the recommendations was increased in the latest version of the RDA to 10 microgram per day for the ages 51 to 70 years. For ages 71 years and older, it is 15 microgram per day. Supplements of 20 microgram of vitamin D have been shown to help prevent the loss of bone mineral density in the femoral neck of postmenopausal women. Elderly persons can absorb pharmacological doses of the vitamin equally well as younger subjects. Supplements of 10 to 20 micrograms have been recommended for persons at risk of deficiency. On a practical level, one can avoid a vitamin D deficiency simply by getting approximately 15 minutes of exposure to sunlight each day. Those individuals living in the southern portion of the United States have more exposure to sunlight in the winter months than those living in the northern parts of the country. What are the functions of vitamin D? The major functions are mobilization of bone calcium phosphorus, mineralization and formation of new bone, bone growth and development, calcification of oystered tissue, modulation of the transcription of cell cycle proteins, formation of enzymes, regulation of amino acid levels in the blood, participation in muscle formation and metabolism, inhibition of cancer cell proliferation and growth, a role in the immune system and regulation of blood pressure. Vitamin D is required to maintain normal blood levels of calcium and phosphorus that are in turn needed for the normal mineralization of bone, muscle contraction, nerve conduction and general cellular functions in all cells of the body. Vitamin D carries on this function after conversion to its active form 125-dihydroxyvitamin D or calcitrol. This active form regulates the transcription of a number of vitamin D dependent genes coding for calcium transporting proteins and bone matrix protein. Under hypocalcemic condition, the parathyroid glands secrete parathyroid hormone which acts on the kidney and bone. In kidney, the parathyroid hormone stimulates renal absorption of calcium and causes phosphate diuresis. In addition, it stimulates the enzyme 25-hydroxy-D3-1-alpha-hydroxylase to produce more of 125-dihydroxy-D3 which acts on its target tissues intestine and bone. In the intestine, it stimulates intestinal calcium absorption. In the bone, 125-dihydroxy-D3 together with parathyroid hormone stimulates a transfer of calcium from the bone fluid compartment to the extracellular fluid compartment 125-dihydroxy-D3 binds to the vitamin D receptor in the systol. The ligand receptor complex then translocates to the nucleus where it induces the transcription of specific genes which code for calcium and phosphorus transport proteins. These three sources of calcium, that is reabsorption from kidney, enhanced transport from the intestine and mobilization from bone cause an elevation of plasma calcium concentration and suppression of parathyroid hormone secretion. Consequently, the entire calcium mobilizing system is turned off. Vitamin D also modulates the transcription cell cycle proteins 
that decrease cell proliferation and increase cell differentiation of a number of specialized cells of the body. This property may explain the actions of vitamin D in bone resorption, intestinal calcium transport and skin. Vitamin D also possesses immunomodulatory properties that may alter responses to infections in vivo. The cell differentiating and immunomodulatory properties underlie the reason why vitamin D derivatives are now used successfully in the treatment of psoriasis and other skin disorders. The main physiological function of vitamin D is to maintain calcium balance. Calcitrol is formed from cholecalciferol and maintains the plasma concentration of calcium by increasing intestinal resorption of calcium, reducing excretion by increasing resorption from the distal renal tubule and mobilizing the mineral from bone. Calcitriol regulates the expression of many genes through binding to and activating nuclear receptors that modulate gene expression. This nuclear activity may explain many of the effects of vitamin D including effects on the secretion of insulin and the synthesis and secretion of parathyroid and thyroid hormones. Calcitriol promotes maturation and differentiation of various cell types including lymphocytes and monocytes with associated effects on immune function. It also influences the rate of proliferation and differentiation of various cancer cell types in vitro suggesting a protective effect of vitamin D against prostate cancer. There is evidence that vitamin D suppresses development of the main cells of adipose tissue that is adipocytes and thereby helps to protect against atherosclerosis. What are the effects of deficiency? Vitamin E deficiency are actually rare. Deficiency generally occurs in individuals who are not adequately exposed to sunlight. Vitamin D deficiency leads to abdominal calcium homeostasis resulting in defective mineralization of the growing bones which is termed as rickets in children or a decrease in the mineral content of the matrix of bones which is termed as osteomalacia in adults resulting in weakened bones. Vitamin D deficiency generally occurs in infants who are solely breastfed without exposure to sunlight. Premature infants are more susceptible than full term infants since the rapid growth rate and calcification of the skeleton impose additional demands for vitamin D. Rickets is characterized by improper mineralization during the development of bones that result in soft bones. Osteomalacia is characterized by demineralization of previously formed bone leading to increased softness and susceptibility to fracture. In rickets, the associated characteristics results from a failure of growing bones to mineralize. As the epiphyseal cartilage of bone continues to grow, it is not properly replaced with matrix and hydroxyapatite. This results in a bowing of longer weight bearing bones such as a femur, tibia and fibula referred to as bow legs or knock knees, deformations of the knee region and curvature of the spine. The typical symptoms in rachitic children are soft and fragile bones, enlarged joints, bow legs and beaded junctions of ribs and coastal cartilage called rachitic rosary. Rickets can be treated by giving large doses of vitamin D. It can be prevented by the exposure of infants to morning sunlight. Vitamin D resistant rickets, this is also called renal rickets. In this case also, low calcium levels are seen. It is an inherited disease. Patients show hypophosphatemia and severe rickets. Vitamin D does not reverse the disease. Vitamin D deficiency during adulthood reduces calcium and phosphate absorption. As the bone turnover occurs, the matrix is preserved. However, bone progressively loses its mineralization. Loss of mineral resulting in decreased bone density is referred to as osteomalacia 
and can result in bone fractures. Vitamin D deficiency despite poor dietary intake can be avoided by adequate exposure to sunlight. Osteomalacia is more prevalent in women of childbearing age with calcium depletion due to multiple pregnancies, inadequate intake or insufficient exposure to sun. It can also occur due to gastrointestinal diseases as well as chronic renal diseases when absorption of calcium and synthesis of vitamin D are impaired. Typical symptoms of osteomalacia include pain in bones of the legs and lower part of the back, difficulty in walking and climbing stairs. Due to the softness of bones of legs, spine and pelvis, they easily bend resulting in deformities. In osteomalacia, serum levels of inorganic phosphorus, calcium and vitamin D are decreased and alkaline phosphatase are raised. Osteomalacia can be prevented by adequate intakes of calcium and vitamin D. People with lighter skin color require only about 10 to 15 minutes of summer sun exposure to make adequate amounts of vitamin D. The necessary exposure time for people with darker skin color seems to increase relative to the degree of skin color. Also, the ability to make vitamin D appears to be stronger in youth and decreases relative to age. Vitamin D deficiency is also associated with increased bone turnover referred to as osteoporosis. Now finally, we shall see the effects of the toxicity of vitamin D. The fat soluble vitamins in contrast to the water soluble vitamins is not rapidly excreted or metabolized and if taken in excessive amounts may accumulate in the body and produce undesirable toxic effects. The tolerable upper limit for vitamin D has been set at 1000 international unit or 25 micrograms for infants. The skin destroys unabsorbed pre-vitamin and vitamin D. Hence, increased sunlight irradiation does not cause excessive levels in the body. Persons at risk include those who use vitamin D containing supplements in addition to large intakes of oily fish, fish oils and fortified milk. High doses of vitamin D are dangerous and can result in the permanent deposit of minerals in the heart, lungs and kidneys. Symptoms of toxicity include nausea, vomiting, pain in joints and loss of interest in eating food. Vitamin D has recently found an association with psoriasis, a common disease of the skin. Excessive intake of vitamin D, especially in infants, can be toxic. Symptoms of toxicity or hypovitaminosis D include calcification of the soft tissues such as the kidneys and lungs and fragile bones. Prolonged elevated intake of cholecalciferol produces elevated blood calcium concentration in infants and calcium deposits in the kidney, nephrons in both infants and adults interfering with overall kidney function. For example, when fortified milk and fortified cereals are used in addition to vitamin supplements, infants may consume excessive cholecalciferol. Individuals consuming diets high in fatty fish and fortified milk in addition to dietary supplements containing vitamin D may be at risk of toxicity. Hence, we come to the conclusion of this session wherein we have seen the metabolism, functions, dietary sources, deficiency disorders and toxicity associated with vitamin D. Thank you and goodbye. This is Anu Joseph signing off.